so many Jefferson salamanders here. It's such an excellent crossing. We found this last year. Look at him go. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. There's just herps all over the road at this spot. There's so what is that? Eastern Newt. Eastern Newt. Where are the Jeffs? There's another one. You wanna go turn the hazards on in your car or are you good? I'm off the road. There's a spotted salamander. Here's a Jefferson. Oh, there's a Jefferson salamander. Very cool, booking it across the road. Here's another one. Well, if a car comes, I want to help him across. Oop, Oop, Eastern Newt. There's frogs all over the road. Salamanders everywhere. Oh, look at him go. He's going the wrong way. Woo! We're over here in the Valley and Ridge region of Maryland and we came across a Jefferson salamander. These guys are real un a unique mole salamander. They have real long toes. And they can dig real deep into the ground. So early March is pretty much your only time you're going to get to see them for the most part. And uh, they have this real long tail. Real cool looking. Not too many salamanders have a tail this long here in Maryland. Alright, we're briefly going to go over the difference between a Jefferson salamander, which I have here, and these two spotted salamanders, which I have here. The Jefferson salamander, as you can see next to the spotted salamanders, is much skinnier. The tail is much longer and flat and blade-like. The spotted salamanders, the tails are definitely more rounded, but don't be fooled. This big one here is really just a spotted salamander without any spots. A head is, the head is a very good indicator. They have a, spotted salamanders tend to have a bigger and fatter neck. After experiencing the salamander migrations to their breeding pools in the early spring, we return to the Valley and Ridge region in the fall to witness another spectacular event. All right, I just flipped a little red salamander here in this seep, which is normally full of water, but as we're getting closer to autumn, you can see summer's done quite a number on it. It's almost completely dry. We've still found quite a few salamanders here, but it's going to get a lot better in the spring when it's full of water again. We're going to continue on with our day. We're hoping to find a really cool thing that happens in the fall out here. We're hoping to see some baby rattlesnakes. Yeah, I see that, see but you're racer. looking... All right, so follow this rock here mm -hmm. to the end and then go down. All right. This is one of the favorite things about fall to me, is coming out and getting to see birthing season. Under this rock that my hand is on, right here, we've got a clutch of newly born baby timber rattlesnakes. This is one of the most amazing things that a lot of people don't know. A lot of the venomous snakes actually give live birth, and they're communal denners. So a lot of times the venomous snakes will congregate in rocky areas with other snakes. And as you can see with these baby timber rattlesnakes. There's also a copperhead in there. Uh, on the occasion I see a lot of other snakes using the same areas that the timber rattlesnakes do. Uh, other egg laying snakes like black racers and black rat snakes. But usually the live bearing venomous snakes, the timber rattlesnakes and the copperheads, they're very used to each other and they'll share these areas. A lot of times the mother snakes after they give birth they will provide some protection for their baby snakes since a lot of time they'll usually lay them at their overwintering den sites. There's a big gravid female up here. Come on, let's go take a look at her. Wow, she is immense, isn't she? She's uh probably going to give birth here I would guess within the next few weeks just judging by how round she is but when you're in an area where they're all giving birth I mean this is really not an uncommon sight especially these days we have been seeing more and more of these over the years and it's it's really an amazing thing to see and to just know that these rattlesnakes are out here and that they're doing so well hold on there's, oh, there's one right here yep and then there's another one down there I can't I tried to get this shed, but it made that copperhead buzz. You can see this copperhead in here. You can see the head and the front part of the body look pretty clean. You can see the rest of it looks pretty wrinkly because it's actually in the process of shedding its skin. You can see the little bits actually draped over its body and right next to its head there. That's pretty cool. Alright, well I hope
hope you thoroughly enjoyed our tour of Maryland and all the herps that we've seen on our journey. Be sure to stay tuned for future adventures. Like us on our Facebook page and visit us at www.camochairproductions.com. Till next time, happy herping.